the interest of time, I'll not mess about with the microphone. I hope I'm loud enough. Otherwise, let me know. Um, what I'll be talking about here is some work that relates a bit to what Vangelis talked about earlier. It's a real-time tagging system that I've been developing in my group and which we use for a number of different purposes. And I'll start by just sort of picking apart this title, real-time tagging of biomedical entities. And the first part is, of course, what do I mean by real-time tagging? Real-time tagging is that it's basically fast enough that we don't worry about how long it takes to tag something, how fast we can tag things which you send to us over the internet is basically determined by your internet connection. So when we run things locally, the tag implementation we have is taking something like less than one thousandth of a second per abstract, and uh, it's implemented in C++ for efficiency. If you want to know the technical details, the way we achieve flexible matching at that kind of speed is by using a custom hashing function. Also, it's implemented in a way that is inherently threat safe, which means that we have perfect scalability. So if you scale it up to n cores, it runs n times faster. There are no locks inside it. It's accessible via a Python wrapper made with SWIG. So if you're a Python person like with NumPy, you don't have to worry about it. C++, you can just access it as Python objects. Um, we also use that then to, to make, expose it as an HTTP server implemented in Python which uses a threat, a threat pool associated with a priority queue, so requests come in, get queued, and get taken off by a threat pool, where you just set up how many threads you want to run concurrently on the, on the server. The bio biomedical entities that we're tagging in this manner, it's of course dictionary based, so what we have in at the moment, it's a dictionary of small molecule compounds, genes and proteins, organisms, which of course is where the species tagging comes into play, Compartments for which we use the cellular component part of gene ontology, tissues which we take from branded tissue ontology, diseases from disease ontology, environments, Langelis also talks upon that where we use the environment ontology to build a dictionary of that. And of course, as any dictionary based tagging approach, this is easily expandable. If you want to add another type, make another dictionary. That's about it. Uh, what are we using it for? Well, we have a few applications. One thing is where we really make use of it being real-time, and that's in browser-based tools. Some of you might already know the Reflect tool, which has been around for some years, which is where the idea is to do augmented browsing. So what you do is basically you're sitting in your web browser, you're looking at some paper which may be talking about some terms that you don't know about. You use the, in this case, plugin to click a button. It sends all, this, all the text to us. We process it real-time send it back to you in a version where we highlight the terms we recognize, and if you click on them, you get pop-ups with information about those terms. So if it's a protein, you get the protein sequence, the domain architecture, you get other names, you get a description, you get linked out to protein networks and all that kind of stuff. If it's a small molecule compound, you get the, the structure of the compound, also link out to networks and things like that. Recently, we developed a related resource, Vangelis and I, Extract, which participated in BioCreative this year, and that was for the interactive annotation task. So again, now it works as a bookmarklet instead of as a plugin. So you click your bookmarklet, and it goes through the text and it highlights terms, just like Reflect would do it. The difference is what happens when you click on an entity or select a region and click on the bookmarklet. Then it will give you a pop-up that is designed to help you extract entities. So if I select a portion of text, it will show you the text in the pop-up, it will list the identified terms, complete with their identifiers that are what you would want to use if you want to, uh, to annotate the metadata in the database, for example. And if you mouse over something in this table, it highlights the words that correspond to it up in the text and vice versa. You can also copy it to the clipboard or save it to a file in the tab delimited manner so that it's very easy to collect annotations in Excel or whatever you want to gather with it. We use the exact same tagging engine for other purposes, for various pre-computed databases, the best known of which is the string database, which is a database of functional protein associations gathered by all kinds of different evidence that we can get our hands on, text mining being just one of many. We do the same kind of thing for small molecule compounds in stitch, for subcellular localization, for tissue expression, for gene disease associations, all those kinds of things in various resources. The other thing that I just added in here due to it seems like there being a number of people working on it is that we also work on medical text mining. Now in my case, of course, being in Denmark, we do medical text mining in Danish. Again, um, 
with a few changes, it is the same tag are being used for this purpose. The main difference is that we need to be able to handle compound nouns, where in Danish, like in German, instead of having the, the different words in a noun be separate words, they're smashed together as one long word, which of course affects a little bit how you want to do tokenization before you do name density recognition. But except from small differences like that, it's the exact same code doing the job. What do I plan to do while I'm here? Well, one plan is to improve the REST interface. Yes, the tagger has a REST interface. And currently, it just returns things in its own tab delimited format. The Python wrapper of the um, tagger already knows uh, sort of 99% of how to do open annotation in JSON LD. So uh, I hope to be able to hook things in that way. It's not going to be quite that simple. I mean, the reason why I haven't put the HTTP up is there's not clear what the format should be of actually the incoming request. So I know how to produce the result. I don't know how to receive the query. Um, I hope we can sort that out here. So basically, improve the REST interface to support either pop annotation and all open annotation. And with that, I just want to acknowledge Van Gillis, with whom I've been collaborating on a bunch of things here, and Sune Fankil, a former postdoc in my group, who was involved in both coding the C++ tagger and coding the whole Python framework with the uh, human system that we're using.